Hey, welcome everybody to the Owl's Nest Barbecue Wednesday night catch-up show. I'm your host, Steve Ray. We'll be bringing Pete, Mike, and our special guest, Scott Lickamele, in just a little bit. But first, I want to welcome you to the show. Thank you for joining us. All right, there's everybody there. There's Pete, there's Mike, and Scott. There's Scott down there in the left-hand corner. Scott, how are you? Very well. How are you guys doing? Uh, we're doing great. Scott, you got Pete and Mike. There you are. There are two of our uh, Owl's Nest Barbecue Pro Staffers. Now, they're going to be grilling you on these pellets, okay? Well, hope I don't get smoked. Maybe I do. I don't oh, know. you're a funny guy. <laughs> you're, you're a funny guy. Tonight's guest, Scott Likamili from Manchester, Connecticut. I spent about a year personally working with multiple engineering teams and vendors to create a new mill that specifically would be focused on creating hardwood pellets, obviously for barbecue, but, but to retain flavor because most of the mills, really all the mills in the country, are just were designed as heating pellet mills, so they make perfectly good combustible pellets, but they're not focused on the flavor, obviously, because there's heat. So we were like, all right, well, we got to we have to think through wh what's different or what needs to be different in order to retain more flavor, and that's what we ended up doing. Um, and there were a couple of, of differences between our mill and pretty much, and actually every other mill in the country. Uh, we're, we have a, a patent pending process. All right, Scott. Number one, are all barbecue pellets the same? Absolutely not. So they the, the first thing would be the difference between the wood species that are used. <clears throat> and the second aspect is the actual manufacturing process and specifically the drying process, which is, determines the outcome of the flavor of the final pellet. Okay. Uh, my second question is, when I go into the Owl's Nest Barbecue Pro Shop, and I'm looking around and I see several brands of pellets. What makes me think that or want to purchase the Manchester pellets? Why are they the best? Okay. I'm not sure which other brands you sell, but assuming it's just the typical you know, ones that we all are familiar with. Basically, the difference is, is that we're the only round log mill in the United States of America. Um, and so the difference between us and all other mills is that we're a round log mill, which means we use fresh green debarked chip from our local forestry guys. And basically we're grinding, drying and pelletizing that wood, uh, which is a combination of oak, maple, hard maple, hickory and cherry. And we're grinding it and drying it pretty much within the same week or so that it's been cut and chipped. Uh, and so that's the that's the, the, the difference is that we're using fresh material. 99% of all the pellets you see, and certainly what the ones you see in any big box store or chain are, are made with dry sawmill sawdust waste, which is what's used to make heating pellets. And so a lot of heating pellet guys got into the barbecue business by just making new bags and then sticking the heating pellets essentially. But um, that's the main difference is the, is the raw material and then the way we dry uh, is that we have a two-stage drying system instead of a traditional rotary drum dryer. So a rotary drum dryer, I think you, you guys are probably, if anybody's familiar with like feed manufacturing or mills, so the rotary drum is this long cylinder and you basically put the biomass in one end and it rotates through with flue gas going through it. That's from either natural gas or from a, a bark burner. And what happens is, is it, it generally tends to over dry the material because they're less precise because it's only one, one stage dryer. So it's kind of, you just run it through. And then what happens is it takes sawdust that's more or less dry. They run it through a rotary drum dryer for the lower quality pellets, I mean. And then what happens is, is they over dry it and then they add water back in the conditioner over the pellet mill. And so what happens is if you over dry the sawdust and you're starting with just relatively dry material to begin with, and then you add water back, you've pretty much gotten rid of all the terpenes and the other chemicals in the wood that give it the actual flavor. So what our process does is instead of taking dry sawmill waste and running it through a rotary drum dryer, we take fresh hardwoods that have been debarked. So they have very low ash content and they won't get grit on the food, number one. Uh, number two, we run it through a two-stage drying system, which is part of our patented process here. The first stage is a flash dryer which hits it at a high temperature and drops the moisture content from say an average of about 40% to say like 20. And then the second stage, which is the secret to our process is the fluidized bed dryer. That's about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. You put, you run the material through the fluidized bed dryer so that, and we have a, we have an HMI system that has like algorithmically controlled sensors and 
mechanisms that adjust the, the temperature of the heating and the speed at which the materials pass through both of the systems of drying. So we don't over dry, we bring it to the precise moisture content that we need in order to achieve the target moisture content so that we don't over dry it and thereby we retain more flavor. And because we're the only mill in the country that's combining fresh wood with that specific drying process, we're getting very good flavor retention and we don't add artificial chemical agents to mask the either lack of flavor or poor flavor if you're using wood like that you really shouldn't be using in pellets like gum tree, which one of our competitors uses quite a bit of, we won't name them. <laughs> so you're, we're using traditional Eastern hardwoods that are appropriate for barbecue that you would use in a stick burner or an offset smoker. But instead, we're, what we're trying to do is, is retain the most amount of natural wood flavor that you would, so you're as, we're as close as we can get to using an offset smoker. And that's sort of the okay. Long all right now, <laughs> now scott we all use your pellets and we all love them they're great thanks if i was coming to you as someone that has never tried your pellet how much more smoke flavor would your pellets impart in food versus some of the big box store brands sure. that we can go pick up i would say i mean obviously it's hard to to compare to all of them but i would say on average for the lower price point or at least the mass distributed ones like in big box stores I would say we're, we're, you know, multiples more smoke, you know, like 150, 50 to hundred percent more smoke than you're getting in terms of the natural flavor. Um, that is hundred percent without any additives of any type. So say at least double the smoke flavor, I would say on average. From so that. one thing uh, about the pellet, your pellets is, is it's almost like, you know, I have a stick burner. A lot of us had stick burners still yeah. have them. But it's uh, using those pellets is almost like the smell when you're when you're actually in a stick burner. That's what I like about them. So you're actually feels like you're kind of, you know, cooking big uh, chunks of wood. That's yeah. And that's that's exactly what we spent literally like a year in the design process to understand chemically. How does the wood change? How does the, the flavor profile of the wood change? as you process it, obviously you, you're grinding it down. We basically, we take two inch minus chip, we grind it down to like five sixteenths and then we run it through the pulp through the two stage dryer. But that whole process, the discovery process was critical because the, the, the pellet mill industry and the engineers that generally work in it are so used to, to just very traditional heating pellet models for manufacturing because they're going for highest max, they're going for maximum volume. The, the main difference between the big box and us is that pellets is that the big box guys, the only way they can distribute in that model, you know, at that low, lower price point, particularly, is if they're only taking essentially free or very low cost uh, sawmill waste from a nearby sawmill. And that, that's how the, a lot of those mills originated, kind of next to or adjacent or contiguous to sawmills. And that, but we're not, we don't do that. We just use fresh woods to begin with you know when i first uh first time i ever put a, a bag when i got them in i put a bag in there you know in the mornings we'll fill the um we'll, we'll put in the green mountain grill we'll put you know pellets in there and we'll start to grill up just to put you know flavorful smell in the air you know not cooking anything just right. put some barbecue smell in the air and I, I dumped the uh pellets that i had in there and i added the the manchester pellets and um we'll let them burn you know, let the grill warm up. I let it sit out there and percolate a little bit. And uh, so I went out there um, to check it and make sure everything was okay. And I, I smelled and I, and I went over to my offset that I had sitting out there at the time. I thought this smells like it's coming out of my Jambo. <laughs> That's great. And and it, and it was your pellets. I mean, the, the smell is so different and distinct from the Manchester pellet that it, it smells like it's coming out of a stick burn. I mean, it, it's incredible. Thank you for, for noticing <laughs> yeah. you, because you can compare it. And that's, that's really important because I think, I think a lot of people, you know, 90% of people that come in to buy a pellet, you know, grill supply, they probably didn't own a stick burner in the past, or maybe, in, maybe in your area that there are more experts, but up here, you know, in new England, not really, you know, people are just, it's new to them. And so they, they don't know, you know, they don't know the difference between the two necessarily um, unless they're a barbecue restaurant which we have a lot of barbecue restaurants that our customers are our customers because they use commercial pellet smokers increasingly yep. in order to scale their businesses. And they're, they were struggling with flavor 
because they were just like, we can't get the right flavor with the kind of the cheaper stuff. The, um, you know, pellets, you, you mentioned pellets on, on any social media. Uh, and you know, and I guarantee you it's a, um, it's, it's a war of words. It's, you know, no, these are better. Those are junk. These are junk. Those are better. This is better. Blah, 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 blah. It, it just, it just goes on and on and on. Um, I, I've got, I've, I've used at least 10 bags of Manchester pellets over the last, I guess we've had the product now for five or six months. Uh, never, no trouble, no jams, no, no irregular burns, no flare ups, nothing oh, out of the ordinary. Okay. Uh, the dust uh, is a lot lower inside when you clean out the uh, smoker. Cause I've got to clean that a lot. Cause we, cause we burn it pretty much every sure. day. Uh, low, low dust output. Uh, I, I mean, it, it's such a good product. I hope that the, the mix that you have now, which is what it, what is it now, Scott? It's going to be, it's, it's kind of oaky. It's like a lot, it's probably 40% red Oak, white Oak, and then hmm. hard maples, a couple different types of species we have up here and then hickory and cherry. So yeah, hickory the cherry, and cherry would be the smallest amount. We have very little cherry, but it's in there. Well, are, are there plans to introduce any single flavors? Cause a lot of people don't, you know, a lot of people are looking for just a single Sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, we, we looked at the possibility of eventually doing a hickory. That might be one that we want to do. Cause I know a lot of, a lot of people really like that, the pure hickory flavor. I think the challenge that we have is that about 70% of the U S barbecue pellet market is a blend. And so the challenge we have is that we have lower price point competitors who have, who label their, their pellets as cherry or apple but in many cases, what, what's written on the bag is not actually what's in the bag because it's not a regulated industry. So you can write whatever you want. And uh, we're, we're kind of on a, a campaign now to only carry those those products that uh, are using, you know, the hardwoods and either, you know, right. very little fillers or no fillers at all. Because it's, it is amazing what a difference you can tell when you yeah. use a, a bag. And the thing is, they're no more expensive than the other type. That's what I liked about it. Yeah, we're, price point. Price point's wonderful. Exactly. I mean, I think that there are definitely cheaper options. Like if you go, I don't know if you guys have a lot of tractor supply stores down in your neck of the woods, but if you go there, there there are some other brands like Bear Mountain is is probably the cheapest, lowest price point mass distributed pellet. I think. Um, God, I, I I can't thank you enough for joining us sure. tonight. Thank you for all the information. Thanks for uh, having a little fun with us at the beginning of the show. Um, we are we are just uh, pleased as we can be at the store with your product, and I want I want people to know that this it's different. It it's not the same. It's it's different in a good way. Um, it will impart better flavor on your food. If you're one of those people that complain these pellets just don't flavor my food like you know like a stick burner does, uh, this this won't this won't equal it, but it will get it closer. And uh, you know that's the trade off of having a pellet, guys, and uh, a not and a stick burner. Or right. charcoal, you know, it's uh, you're you're not gonna, you're not gonna get the exact taste, but you're gonna have a, uh, an easier grill to use, and you're still gonna get good taste. And with the pellets, with the Manchester pellets, you can get great taste. I'll Thank you. That's, there's a lot of people that have uh, that come in and buy their regular pellet. I like this pellet. This is what I use. Sure. But when the Manchester pellets came in, and they started using them, those same folks that normally were using different pellets, that's all they want now. You know, they like they feel like they're getting a cleaner burn or feel like they're getting the smell, the taste just all the way around. So it's, I'm, you know, sitting back and watching and, and helping folks with it. There's a lot of people out there that are just learning about them in our area and coming in. But that's what they've done. They're starting to swap over. That's wonderful to hear. It's music to our ears. We're very grateful that people give us a chance as a new product on the market. We're an emerging brand. And our goal is, you know, we're a family run business. So we're, we're just looking to provide really high quality products, you know, pellets at a very reasonable price. And we're just trying to help people, you know, improve their overall barbecue experience and not run into that issue of, oh, I spent, you know, 500 or a thousand bucks on a pellet grill. And like, what's going on these, you know, if they're using pellets that aren't good, cause there are many good pellet grills, but it's, it's hard to find really high quality wood pellets these days. And so that, that's our, our goal is to provide that. Well, we've got them. They're using, they're using real hard woods. No, no fillers, no sawdust, or they chip them out of the wood. They and if you if you look us up, we, we do have a website where we have a lot of uh, articles on our blog about all the different dealers around the country. And also, 
The other thing too, is we have a lot of barbecue teams that compete in KCBS competitions um, and they've been winning a lot of first place prizes last year during the last season using our pellets. So we have a lot of folks that really like it and they get good results. Um, and that combined with like some, like some pretty well-known restaurants in our state uh, also, um, you know, they really you love our pellets and, and they're they, one of our restaurant customers just won best barbecue restaurant in Connecticut award in one of our main magazines. So we're, we're, we're very excited about, about the quality and just about, we also want to focus on working only with other independent businesses rather than with chains, because we think independent barbecue supply and independent hardware stores that have barbecue offerings, that's, that's where people want to go. They don't want to go to some giant chain because it's just not, they don't get the advice and they don't get the quality I think that they can get from just independent retailers. Well, Scott, I'm, I'm, I agree a hundred percent. Mike, have you got anything else for Scott before we let him go? You know, Scott, I just want to say thank you for coming on and uh, keep making a good product and we're looking for stuff to come out in the future. Okay. Thank you very much. We appreciate, I appreciate your, your guys' time and thanks so much for having me on tonight. All right. All right. Scott. Thank you so much, care, Scott. Guys. We appreciate you very much.